was happy to do more. And uh, after that, I was put in some very, very uncomfortable, awkward positions, and I kept on being like, dude, look, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. I'm just, let's just be friends. You know, I don't want to be rude. But, and, and, and they would put me in circles where, you know, they introduce you to agents, they introduce you to superstars from around the world, and they'd be like, this can be your life if you do this. And it, it went on for a long time, and it was, it was complete harassment. And if, you know, I understand the fear that people have about coming forward about something like that, because especially as a man, you feel like you should be able to handle a situation like that. But when you're a young kid in this industry, you often can't. With me, it culminated in me finally going, okay, and going over to the house and then grabbing that person by the neck and saying, if you ever contact me again, I'm going to break this. Oh. And I was 22 then and bigger than I am now. So it was, yeah, it was horrifying. I never let myself get put into that position again, but it was actually terrifying to see how easily it happened. And it happens every day over and over, and I'd be very surprised if everyone on this panel hasn't had a similar experience with somebody mm -hmm. who yeah, tried to do that. You're not. I feel left out. Uh, I don't know if people are just scared of me. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, but my, my experience was through um, the young lady that I moved to Hollywood with. And this fella uh, said he was a manager and he was going to you know, turn her into a, a big old star. And, uh, <laughs> he took her out to dinner, and um, he started to explain to her that he could only represent her if, uh, if he was hot for her. And then he put some money across the table, <gasps> and then he said that his car was in the parking lot, and, uh, and she, 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 um, she came home and she was really hurt by it, and uh, I completely lost my mind um, and I called him up and uh, I never heard from him again and neither did she uh, because um, you know I just I just didn't want him talking to her anymore I mean this is something that happens all the time it doesn't happen to giant uh, Sasquatches like myself very often but uh, be my friend but it but it but, but, <laughs> But yeah, I, I experienced it through someone else's, um, you know, perspective. But yeah, I feel like it can be more pervasive. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, we, we always, when we think of sexism immediately, we think of sexual harassment, but I feel like it's way more pervasive than that. And it's it's very subversive, and it's tricky with It's men. blackmail, it, in yes. other ways. And it's also, and, and not just in a, a sense of sexual exploitation, but like the mythology of the man, oh. that men are either manly or they're not. There's no... There's no wiggle room in terms of gender. Like, if you were to make a list of all the qualities that men have and women have, no person in life would completely conform to one side of the list. There's always some crossover, but there's a pressure to be a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way, and it's, it's, I, I think it's, it's, it's just silly. It's really silly. And I, I also feel like... And, yeah, I think the mythology of the man is just ridiculous. It's got to stop. And that's another thing that, that Hollywood in particular is really bad in, in terms of sexism, is really bad about exploiting. And um, I don't know, I just think there needs to be more room for men, to all different kinds of men. Men who, or, or not just men, non-binary gender. Um, it, like the whole, I don't know if anybody's familiar with like the cisgender stuff, but it, it's not just about being a cisgendered man. It's about being a fully multifaceted, multidimensional man. And I think we need more of that. I'm looking to exploit more of that, not just the other. Sam, Sam what about you? Because I know that the, the, the gals have fun, you know, asking you about, do you go commando under that guilt? Uh, but it, does, <laughs> does it get to be a little much when you, you have to answer those kind of questions all the time? Um, you know, I think it's always in, in jest, and uh, I, I certainly, you know, don't mind um, a little bit of uh, teasing or um, fun. But, you know, sometimes you can get a little too far, and, uh, yeah, next time I'll work. Because well, it's reductive, too, right? 
<laughs> but yeah, it, it can go too far, I guess. Um, there have been occasions when, not myself, but Ray McTavish, uh, fantastic actor on the show, he's, he had a, a, someone lying on the floor trying to look up his kill. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, I think that's maybe taking a touch too far. But um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, in my perspective, it, it's um, a bit of fun, and I think, uh, you know, we just don't want to cross any boundaries. No, no. It's because, it, you know, that comes with the assumption that all men are just constantly sexual, always sexual, always looking for sex, all the time. Always. I think, I think what you said, uh, absolutely, like, you know, these were Which is a complete and utter lie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, as an addendum to that as well, I, I mean, I've had similar situations happen with very powerful women, too. It, it's not just, you know, it, men aren't the only perpetrators of this crime, you know what I mean? It's just, it's power that is the perpetrator of this crime, and those of us who, you know, have dreams, find those dreams exploited by people who can grant them. Awesome. And that's scary. Okay, if you have any questions for this panel, you are want to talk about sexual harassment, maybe ask about porn, and we will start lines in up. Okay. Right now, okay? Yeah. Okay, so we have a question for Ian. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand how Michael's thing isn't sexual exploitation <laughs> in some way. <laughs> of course. All right, let me, tell me, tell me about your most awkward, or if it's not awkward, your sweetest fan encounter ever. Awkward or sweet fan encounter? Let me start with you. We we um, we do these these conventions um, on weekends. I think probably mostly everyone on the panel so you probably had an opportunity to do one. If not, I will. Um, where we meet fans, and not different than this, which is more one-on-one, -on -one where we actually talk and get signatures and photos. And um, there's this one uh, family that keeps visiting with their their son Justin, and has uh, multiple sclerosis. Um, and you can just I, I can't explain what how you see the light in this kid's eyes when he comes and visits us. And that, that just transfers directly to see that no matter what you're doing, um, the, whatever the project is, if it's, if it's some sort of history channel, you know, biopic, which is, you know, teaching history, changing lives, or it's some sort of throwaway, what we think, entertainment, just fluff, you, we, we have the opportunity to affect lives in ways that we we're not even aware of what happens. And when you see that come back to you in the form of somebody coming to visit you, and from something that you have done or you are a part of, you're able to bring that much joy and affect them in, in that way. You know, I'm sitting here talking about some, some kid that no one knows. If you turn around, you look, look at this hall. This hall is full of 7,000 people who are affected by what we are doing up here for you and every panel that's been here today. Um, yeah. That's huge. Yeah, and thank I, you thank so you, much. Yeah, for, for that. Thank you. It's, it's, it's about, uh, it, happens, it happens often, and it's just, it, there's, there's so many moments when, when, when it comes back to us, and uh, it's, we're very, very, all of us are very grateful for it. Zachary, what about you? Any awkward or? Sweet fan moment, fan encounter. Um, the, I mean, look, I'm sure, yeah, there's a lot of awkward ones, and there's a lot of sweet ones. Um, but I, I, I just want to kind of keep running on what, what Michael was saying because I, it's you know, the arts is a very interesting thing. I think that you know, there are a lot of other vocations in the world where it's a, you know, you pay for a service, the service is done, and it's very clear that it, mission has been accomplished. You pay a plumber to come and, you know, fix your plumbing and. Pay them, you, and the plumbing is fixed. It's it's, it's a very clear cut kind of linear thing, uh, and the plumber knows that their service has been done or whatever, you know. Um, but in the arts, you and especially by the way, when you're, you know, theater is a little different because you get a response immediately, and there's a symbiotic relationship between you and your audience. You know if you're failing them. I mean, it's pretty clear if they're not laughing at the jokes, if it's comedy, if they're not quiet as a drama and you, people were talking, you know that you're not connected with them. But television and film are very interesting because you make it kind of in a bubble and you don't know. You don't ever, you know, unless you go to conventions or you go to a fan meetup or something, you don't know how, it, how it's affected somebody. And so, uh, 
So it, it's very, uh, I think it's very important for us to connect with fans. I think it's very important for us to hear that because that is the feedback that we need to have to, in order for us to be better at our craft and to know what we are serving or not serving a certain demographic. And, you know, when somebody comes up to you and they tell you that, when I, for example, you know, when I was doing Chuck and, and somebody told me that, uh, I, love, I love you guys. Um, you know, having fans come up and, and tell me that um, their father had passed away a year before and they hadn't seen their mom smile for a year. And then they started watching Chuck and they started watching, they started seeing their mom smile. And then the whole family unit started getting together and watching the television. They didn't really hang out normally otherwise, you know, but there was this one show that brought them together and it moved them and it meant something to them. and. I mean, that's what gives us as entertainers, as artists, that's what gives you purpose. It, gave, it gives me purpose. So. The, it's those moments that are the sweet. Let's hear from some of those fans, because they're waiting in line. Let's start with you. Go ahead, girl. Hi, my name is Coco, and my question is... Hey, Coco, you have a fan page over here. <laughs> and, by the way, I was there when the woman was on the floor by the ground. But my it question was you. <laughs> my, um, last week I had an opportunity to drive through New Galloway and looked at the landscape. So when you were younger and obsessing or role-playing about King Arthur or Robert the Bruce, how have you brought that to the role of Jamie Frazier? I got this one. Um, <laughs> great question. Wow, yeah. That's, uh, see, you're alluding to, I, I was brought up in the southwest of Scotland, and uh, I am just very fortunate to be playing this character that um, is returned to Scotland, and uh, I've been away from Scotland for uh, you know, a good many years, and so just to rediscover, you know, my home country, to, to rediscover, like, the stories and music and culture that, that I grew up with, but didn't really appreciate at the time, because you were young, and I guess that's what we do as actors, we, we use everything around us, and, and um, and it's been uh, really rewarding to go back and hopefully sort of transfer that across the screen so, so you guys can fall in love with the country as well. All right, next gal. Hello, gentlemen. I just want to say thank you. You guys all are all amazing. And thank you, Entertainment Week, for being such yeah. wonderful eye candy. You're so welcome. <laughs> don't, take, don't take offense. <laughs> My I know. Now, that is back <laughs> <laughs> My question is, you know, we're all here, all these diverse people who enjoy, you know, a certain thing like, you know, Star Wars, yeah. or Star Trek, yeah. Game of Thrones, whatever it is. What do you guys come here for? Is there anything that you like to geek out on? Oh, yes. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Fringe, uh, Twin Peaks, yes. everything. I don't know. The list is forever long. I don't know. Exactly. Is that is Wiener? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to get Wiener next year. We have to go see that movie tonight. Oh God, there'll be a screening. <laughs> An on-demand screen. We can do a double bill. Uh, the screen. The screen. Double feature. Live version and wiener. <laughs> Rob, 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 what do you geek out about? Come on. Oh, man, you know me. I geek out about everything. I mean, I'm, I was... I mean, I'm a massive Warcraft player. I'm, I'm a massive... I'm obsessed with Star Trek. I'm obsessed with Mass Effect. I like comics. I mean, I saw every episode of Chuck twice. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I, this is, I, I, I'm the lucky guy who got to go from there to here. This is, I, I've been walking the floor for the last two days, spending hundreds of dollars. My favorite thing that happened actually was I found a whole bunch of Pacific Rim toys that I didn't have. And I went, and I went, oh, how much is that? And they went, aren't you in the film? And I went, yeah, and they went, full price. <laughs> It's my favorite place in the world, and uh, you know, it, there's a reason for that. As the great Will Wheaton once said, 
He said, being a nerd is about loving what you love and not apologizing for it. Yes. And that's what this is about. We love what we love. We love each other. I mean, we love Alan's and the Strain and Orphan Black, and we love Star Trek and Star Wars, and we love Warcraft, and we like San Diego. It's okay. Let's sneak in another one. Okay, do another red shirt. Go. Oh, well, I did red shirt. Red shirt. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're going first, bro. Yeah. <laughs> found something interesting. <laughs> so this is pretty cool because uh, my girlfriend and I totally bonded over Chuck and Southland. And Pacific you got a strong girl there. Oh yeah. Okay, Pacific Rim was the first action movie we watched together, so that was dope. Um, <laughs> thanks for representing lefties everywhere. Thanks. That's awesome. Uh, my question is, so as you guys do your movies and your shows, what point do you decide you want to go further with your stunt work and when you drop the hard no on the stunt? Jordan, let's start with you. Did you say you'll start with me? <laughs> Sorry, I think I just hallucinated. <laughs> I, here's what I will say. I have, I enjoyed kicking in that door so much. <laughs> so much, so rewarding was it to feel like I had superpowers. And because who doesn't want, like, let's just be honest, who doesn't want superpowers? Of course I do. I would love to do more stunt work. I just have to find a vehicle for that. Um, my hiatus is from March. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what about you? Talk about your stunt. Um, I, I said, I, not, not to kind of talk for everyone, but I think I'm going to sort of talk for everyone. Um, I think we all want to do as much as we can mm -hmm. at all times, and we rely on our stunt coordinators to pull us back when it is not safe and we need to realize that we we are needed for the rest of the episode and the rest of the season the rest of the movie the rest of our lives with all of our body parts and our faces intact and there are people who get paid to take those risks and are good at taking that risk and are so good at taking that risk that their risk is actually minimized they keep us safe we're gonna push and try to do as much as we can at all times because it's fun it's a blast, but you need to stay safe. Um, so, uh, you know. Agree. Agree. All right, As I get older, I want to do less. <laughs> Have you ever said you could do something to get the job? And then go there and like, I have it. Like, horse riding. Like, well, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, throw it up, fire bow and arrow. Yeah, easy. Yeah. Australian accent. <laughs> Sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but hey, you know what? Sometimes people need to sleep through really entertaining panels. <laughs> Barry Allen or Wally West for me. Oh, oh, honest to God, a country music star in a biopic. I don't know why. <laughs> Fine, wait, Twitty. I don't know, yeah, it's not a good one. Um, I can't think of any while I'm then like Kenny Chesney. I don't want to play Kenny Chesney. <laughs> Nobody wants to play Kenny Chesney. Kenny Chesney. <laughs> Chesney doesn't want to leave. <laughs> That's a lot of hate. I like you and Hank Williams Hank too. Hank Williams, you could right, be great Hank. one. Yeah, you could be Hank. I'll do that. Pretty That's sure Tom Hiddleston just did that. Yeah, I think he did. Kevin, my, my, my dream role. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's it's really weird. People ask me that, and I don't really have a dream role. I just, um, uh, to tell you the honest truth, and it's so cheesy, it's so corny, but. Every time I get a job, it's it's it, it's it's a dream role. It's like the, the fact that I get 
to bring life uh, to characters that, and, and there's all these, uh, you know, amazingly talented individuals all around us that are helping us live our dream as actors, and we, we actually get to make stuff that you guys get to watch, and then you come to places like this and you cheer for us. It's like the coolest damn thing. Like, I couldn't have dreamt this up. And so every role that I get to play is my dream role, and I thank you for, for, for watching. I mean, I'm Sam, do you have a dream role? Oh, God. Yeah, I, I mean, I want to go to space. I want to do something. I want it to be in Aliens. I, I love those movies and that franchise. Ads also. Uh, I'd love to be in The Walking Dead, please. That'd be very nice. Thanks for watching. Make it happen. I'll bring the accent. I gotta get the chick with the book on her head. Go. Hi. Hello. Oh, my. <laughs> Great balance. That's stuck on. That's so funny you would ask me this question. Um, I know so little about art, but, <laughs> but um, I had someone, I, I was talking with someone about what I would like to do for season four, and um, this person gave me a couple of harsh criticisms, and one of which was that she really didn't believe that I knew anything about art, and that I was an artist, and that, yeah, it was tough, but uh, she gave me some really great advice, which was, that I should bring all of, because I'm not a visual artist, I tried once and I burned that canvas. It does not exist anymore, it was so bad. I don't know what I was attempting to do, cubism or something, it was awful. But acting um, is, an, is a form of impressionist or expressionist art. It's, it's both. And the artist that I happen to play is an expressionist painter. So if I take everything that I know about my work as an actor and I, I bring it to this person, then hopefully more of that visual artistry will register. And some of that process has been just going into art shops. Like I was in an art shop in Dublin recently and I saw all of these amazing local artists work, sketches, like pencil drawings. There's a guy who sells movie posters that he has drawn with pencil crayons at the Melrose Trading Post in Los Angeles. He's there every Sunday. They're the most incredible. I bought two of them. Um, I haven't hung them up yet, but I'm just trying to expose myself to local artist work, so I don't have a name. Like, I, there are some artists that I really love, and uh, architectural designers, like when I saw the Basilica in Italy, it was gorgeous. But what am I saying? What am I, somebody cut me off here. I am, um, yeah, I'm all, all I can say is I will, I'm, I'm making an effort to learn and educate myself more about um, art history and, and whatever I can. All right, one more question. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, cool. oh, look at that. Um, it's a pleasure to spend uh, this afternoon with such intelligent, talented, and fine-looking warriors and moderator. Um, also, <laughs> I exactly love Nerd HQ. I had the most amazing time last year dancing the night away at Color Break. Thanks, I'm glad. I'm I'm so lucky this, this girl knows how to start a question. <laughs> I did. Right, I have a question. So, about warriors. Um, how, I, some of you have already answered this question, but for those who haven't, uh, have any of you had any fight training before getting your, um, you know, kick assness on, on screen? And have any of you gotten into a fight off screen? Ooh. Ooh, let's go with the off screen part first. I'm going to go on record here saying that probably the English and Irish dudes on this panel have had more fights than the American dudes on this panel. <laughs> Sam, what do you say? What do you say, Sam? Uh, we won every one of them. <laughs> I was always uh, uh, a bit of a, as you guys call it, a pussy. I, I uh, <laughs> or, or a pacifist. No, or a pacifist. To be honest, when you're a tall guy, you probably have this as well. You know, people don't tend to go for you because you're tall and they think you're pretty hard. 
I find the other. Yeah, I find the trick is obvious. I find that when I'm in a group, being the big guy in the group, they always go for me first. Well, and if they see your work too, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Think you're <laughs> come up to me and say, oh, you, th you know, you think you're a badass? Let's go. To which I say, yeah, let me buy you a drink. Yeah. And it's over. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not over, pal. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. <laughs> let's go out tonight. Let's go find Wiener. Go to Amazon.com.